What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Twin Sons Podcast, episode 60, the big six zero. Uh, I'm your host, Shane, and we have uh, with us again, Josh. I didn't realize it was the 60th episode. I just realized right now. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm <laughs> lucky I remembered what episode we <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Josh, welcome back. It's been a little bit. It has. It's been too long. It's been too long. Yeah, so we have uh, pretty exciting stuff going on in our life at the moment, uh, and mainly that's because on May 5th, we're getting the second set of uh, Legends of Runeterra's Shirima expansion. I cannot wait. I have been waiting for new cards. There's just been a lot going on, and I can't say I've been burnout. I just have not been playing as much as I would like to. Yeah, Lab of and Legends has taken all my playtime. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot wait to start building some decks and seeing some new faces in the meta, hopefully. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we dive into all that discussion, let me shout out our sponsor, uh, RunterraCCG.com, always coming through with the sponsorship. Uh, really been just great to work with them, and uh, I haven't written in like a month, but I will say I will uh, be breaking down one of these three spoilers, not Zillion, and I can also say I have another article already written, and that's coming out soon. It's actually about, it's kind of like an opinion piece on like what the future of the game looks like, so you can stay tuned to the website for those two articles if you're interested. If you want to read articles written by people who know what they're talking about and Instead of me, you can do that. Uh, right now, Mesame just broke down Zillion and all of his cards and started theory crafting with that already. So that's a really sweet article. And uh, sorry, really great tournament player. He wrote a really fun article with five underrated decks uh, from the seasonal open rounds so that surprised them. So I thought that was a really cool article. Highlighted five, you know, it's not just like TLC and you know Lee Sin or anything. It's five, you know, slightly underrated decks. Uh, and the picture is Aphelios, in case you're wondering. Because there was one Aphelios that uh, made. Top 32, at least, at least that. So yeah, definitely check out those guys. They've been super sweet. But Josh, yeah, we have uh, we have a good bit to talk about. We'll, we'll keep it relatively short today. We're both a little time crunched, but we have to talk about all of these sweet new cards. So first off, uh, you know, it's it's been another, I want to get your opinion real quick. It's been another cycle of releases where they break up a major set into three releases, one big, two small. How do you feel that's gone so far? I think this one, we'll see... How this one goes because i think the real lull happens in between two and three hmm. but i think uh like when targon was released um i think this one ended up being in my opinion pretty successful in the fact that we had azir kind of dominating play rates and we had azir metas at a time and now we have nasus dominating play rates and uh you know the meta and i think even without the full set the meta has been diverse to an extent i i guess you could say yeah and i haven't been too sad about it yeah uh i'm i'm there i might might be a little bit pushed back on the other side of thinking that you know it, it felt like there was a couple so one thing is they did it they released five champions at first here instead of four because now we're getting seven total shreeman champions so the initial release was five instead yeah. of four so that does help um, it still feels like there's a couple archetypes that just fall really flat because they just haven't released any support for the archetypes, like, whatsoever. Um, and that's, like, a little disappointing, but it's also kind of just how it's, you know, they gotta break things up, they, they gotta, if they're splitting it into three, they can't really fit everything. And, like, realistically, if you go through, like you said, Nasus right now is seeing a great amount of play. I mean, he's, uh, you know, Sp Spell Shield Atrocity's always been, uh, problematic. Um, and just Atrocity in general has been problematic. So he's seeing a ton of play because of that. Azir saw a solid amount of aggro play and just really annoying, you know, burn decks that were really fun to play. Uh, Sivir saw a little bit and, you know, LeBlanc came out with her kind of as the pairing there for reputation and all. And then, uh, you know, Renekton has seen his, you know, his Renekton Sejuani deck has been pretty successful. So all that's kind of landed. Some of the stuff that hasn't is like they trinkled in just a little bit of predict mechanic, which is okay. You know, it's just here. It's still some of that stuff's been good. Chronomancer is great. The clock is great. And then they trickled in some landmark stuff. And that's definitely the big miss so far. So, yeah. But realistically, like I said, that's all. So that's a, that's a lot of hits for a uh, only five champions. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I feel like they put out. Um, I, I, when I was talking, I was talking about Shreemo alone, um, because obviously we have Lissandra, who was a huge hit right oh, away. Oh, yeah. Um, Good point. But, uh, yeah, for, the sh for Shreemo itself, I feel like they put out some really uh, interesting and, uh, you know, cars that can hold their own. Um, 
some, you know, maybe they haven't seen their full light because we haven't seen the full package yet. But I feel like Shurima has a handful of cards that, you know, they can be staples to Shurima and hold decks. And uh, obviously when you have big units with uh, Spell Shield, you're going to get um, atrocity wins. Or <laughs> right. I should say e easy win cons. Yeah, uh, so. and he like perfectly goes with, you know, Shadow Isle's plan already, you know, of, yep. of slaying units. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of Shurima... Um, yeah, I, I wanted to give it a rating out of 10, but I feel like maybe a, a 7 or 8 out of 10 for the first release is what I'd give it. Yeah, I, I think I'm there. I think I'm there. I mean, it's it, there was a lot of success. And, like, even, you know, the, the landmark stuff fell a little flat, not just with Talia, but, like, you know, there's the uh, the reputation landmark that says it's okay, it's decent in, like, one deck. There's the, the Sand Swept Tome that's summoning those things. That's kind of eh. All the Rock Bear stuff. And maybe that's all Talia support. Maybe it's not, but... If it's not, that's more than just Talia's archetype. That kind of fell a little bit short, yeah. in my opinion. So, but again, that's gonna happen. Not every card's supposed to be amazing. It's just that it seemed like all that stuff clearly needed more support, and we might we're, we're getting pieces of that right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we can dive in. We they uh, they released a sweet anim, uh, animation of Irelia, Malphite, and Zillion, and I remember you and I uh, and Mikey were freaking out because we we're like, what? What freaking region is Malphite from? <laughs> yeah. I was going through all the lore that I knew. I was looking at the League Universe stuff. I was pulling out my book that we always talk about. Yeah. And everything pointed to, um, what was it, Ixtal. He was made, like, the Ixtali made a, if that's what, I think that's the Ixtali. They made a big monolith um, of all these, yeah, it was just basically this big floating fortress. Yeah. Uh, to fight against the Void. And the Void ended up just chipping away at the monolith like as they were fighting and the rocks that flew off of it are called malphite hmm. and it turns out the malphite we know from league of legends is the last surviving uh <laughs> rock that flew off of that monolith and what, uh what a crazy character <laughs> yeah and so like i was like oh he has to be shuriman but that doesn't make sense yeah um and then like briefly in the lore they're like oh he's been sighted in targon like like the bigfoot of runeterra or something like that hmm. And uh, it seems it seems uh, where he is going to be. Placed, yeah, so. yeah. We were talking about because we know we have uh, you know Zillion was a big portion of that an animation. So it's like all right, he's if he's coming out, he's going to be Shuriman. We know that. So then Malphite can't be. And also we know we believe Zerath's coming out. Like the next set is like titled something of the Underworlds. Mm -hmm. So it seems that way. Who knows exactly. But the thing that sold us was they released three cards: one Irelian, one Targon, one Shuriman. And they said, you know, these three things really support their character. So I was like, all right, or really support their champion. So I was like, all right, that, I'm sold now. He's got to be Targon. And yeah, like you said, but, you know, you, we were looking at the map and you're showing, you know, Shurima's down there, Targon's to the left, Ixtal's like right between the two or something. And I was like, yeah. which, which way did that rock fly off? <laughs> That's what region Wait, he's in. I want to take one second. Did you say an Aurelian card? I did. Yeah, I have no idea. I totally said I combined Irelia and Ionia. And it is also like Aurelian Soul. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that did happen. Yeah. It, it, it took me a second. I was like, he said Aurelia. I mean, that um, card is literally, if you look at the full art, it's just Irelia. It's just yeah, like yeah, zoomed in on a blade to the side. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. It is amazing. But uh, but yeah, um, I was doing my research and uh, Ixtal, part of Shurima, but... Malphite gonna be in Targon. I hope we get some more lore yeah. um, released with this uh, with this set, so that we can actually um, you know, piece together a Malphite story besides yeah. him flying off a monolith and <laughs> over a thousand years or whatever it is, a uh, hundred years growing to strength and eventually becoming this ginormous mountain. So, yeah, it's always interesting. It's like you know, and Polygon actually just put out an article today. I was just looking at about you know how Runeterra is like the first big step of building the league universe. And it, it totally is. I mean, it was just fun going through that with you, just trying to figure out where the hell this guy's going to even. And I was yeah. like, he's Noxus. And I forgot LeBlanc even exists. Cause I just saw Noxus in the animation. I was like, we don't have a Noxus <laughs> like, champ. I'm like, he's 0% Noxus. <laughs> champ. Get it out of here. I'm like, but there's Noxus in the trailer. And yeah, I just totally forgot LeBlanc existed. And I was like, yeah. wait, no, that's definitely not, that's not what he is. <laughs> but yeah, it was super fun doing that. And I mean, it's, it's totally what's going on. We're going to get vo you know, new voice lines for Malphite. We're going to get, uh, a bunch of characters that support him and are part of his package and it's going to be super sweet and you know one of the the most exciting things for me was zillion so zillion is like one of my all-time 
favorite supports to play. I think you guys hate when I play him because he's just a troll, but he's just so fun to drop bombs on. Um, and something that was really interesting to me uh, was that he he really can go in like any direction. Like he he has like the clock theme, you know, the time warping. Mm-hmm. He's got the revive an ally theme. Like his ult in League is obnoxious. He has the bombs, which are my favorite portion of him. I think they're hilarious. But then his passive also helps you yeah. level up a champion. Like, it levels up an ally yeah. champion. So I was like, are they going to go that route? Like, there's so many routes. You can go with lore-based or any of those abilities. And, you know, they went a little bit with the time, and they, they went with the bombs. Yes, they did. I'm so happy they went with the bomb. I feel like that's his true identity. Like, if you say Zillion, you think bomb, then time. Right. So I'm glad... Uh, Time bombs were yes. the number one thing. <laughs> so here's what we got. Uh, it's you know if you're watching the video, you can follow along with these cards as well. If you're listening, we're going to read through the cards to make sure we don't exclude the uh, listeners of the podcast as well. So Zillion's a two drop, the cheapest Shuriman unit, sh- uh, cheapest Shuriman champion so far. He's a one four, which is pretty good stats. Play you create t- uh, four time bombs in your deck, and then you predict when you destroyed two ally time bombs, he leveled up. When he levels up, he's a 2-5, and at the round start, this one's wild, but at round start, you create a fleeting copy of each non-fleeting card I saw you play last round. So that's the time stuff coming in. That's like rewind right there. So essentially, you can't just keep, if you played a fleeting card, it won't copy that, so you can't just keep passing it on, but he'll rewind time just to what real cards you played the turn before. And then you create fleeting copies of those in your hand. You know, they still cost mana. They're not, like, free or anything, but you just get obnoxious hand value. Mm. I, I'm i really tempted to just go PZ, like, right away and use, um, why am I, f- I was literally just thinking. Oh, stress testing? Card. Yeah, stress yeah. testing. Um, I feel like maybe it's, like, a, a niche uh, play, but I feel like it could be, you know, pretty. Yeah. Pretty legit. You can play a lot of freaking cards too. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, so that seems pretty nuts. He still has the play effect where he creates four time bombs and then predicts as well. So if you do just play a leveled up zillion, you can do that. Uh, and the time bomb is pretty nuts. It's a two drop. So I really had the idea of like uh, when we first talked, uh, you know, t- started talking about zillion, I was thinking time bombs would go in your opponent's deck yeah. and be like something on that side, but they go in your own deck from zillion. Uh, when they're summoned, you draw a card and you advance all other time bombs by one round. So card draw is really crazy. So it doesn't mm-hmm. he's not diluting your deck. He's actually enhancing your deck fully because you're, you're drawing cards with these. They do take up a board slot, but they have countdown one. So they get in and out quick. And when they count down, they just deal one damage to all enemies and the enemy nexus. Yeah. Um, even more with PZ, Funsmith time bombs. <laughs> Does that work? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Because we're, we're going through kegs and stuff. I forget what uh, Funsmith says. Because he's not a spell or a skill. So I don't think kegs work. But does Funsmith uh, yeah. work? I feel like... Oh, I have to go look at the I got to look at I Funsmith. Mean, I, but Dreadway, Dreadway works with shrooms. Yeah, so would it work with this? definitely work with Tie Bomb. Yeah, with the Time Bomb. If you want to wait to use Time Bombs until you Dreadway on the board, <laughs> um, you know, it definitely could create some great meme videos of just My like God. exploding the the board yeah i'm, but, I'm uh, sure saucy will have that up at some point oh 100 percent. but yeah these time bombs i just feel like there's so much that use it's like control it's like burn it, yeah we'll see how we'll see where the most optimized deck is but i just feel like um the time bomb and the way that you get the time bombs is just like great zillion resemblance as well as great card game mechanics yeah it's super cool it's not you know, you're just shuffling four. Right now, there's no other cards that shuffle additional time bombs into your deck. Like, nothing else yeah. is coming with that. So you're shuffling four, which means you, you know, you're not going to... If you're just drawing cards, it's going to be hard to find those. But the predict mechanic really, really helps you find them. And it makes you kind of go into that route. And you want to play predict so you can find more time bombs. Obviously, Zillion himself shuffles four first, then predicts. So you can put that right on top. But we already know there's a ton of really good predict cards already. There's already solid ones, and obviously there's more in this in this uh, release here. But yeah, I don't know. I think I think it's really thematically super fun. I love cheap champions, especially a two drop with four health. That yeah, is a yeah, yeah. thick two drop. Yeah, he's pretty beefy. And I am now thinking, does this bring TF back? Yeah, um, I heard a lot of people talking about like is you know comparing him to TF because the time bomb strongly card and predict on him, so it's kind of like you know card advantage. And he's with TF, it seems totally fine too. I mean, because the time bomb essentially is a red card. 
Yes. That's a deal one to everything. Yeah, so it's essentially a red card. You're drawing one. Um, you're predicting, which makes it even more, yeah. uh, you know, um, how should I put it? Uh, consistent. Yeah. Uh, you have pick a card. I know it was nerfed, but it still does its job. Yeah. Um, it's plus the fleeting. It co only costs two now. Like, it was like sideways nerfed, you know, pick a card yeah. too. So it, it does fit in with the fleeting theme as well. Yeah, like pick a card. Um, Although that's now it, pick a card. Oh, yeah, 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 no. Pick a card is a uh, bilge, which is the yeah. It's just it's letting you play more cards. Like you can't do stress testing yeah. and that and zillion. That's what oh, I was scared, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, that's true. But it's that's yeah. That is very. True. It's still but good. I, I, what I was what I was saying. So if you pick a card, yeah, and then you use those cards, zillion then gets to use them uh, the next turn. Yeah. So you get two of your fleeting cards. Yeah, pretty nuts. And also just that much draw is going to help you see your time bombs get, you know, let you predict first and then draw your time bombs, which is really good. And then you just have a bunch of time bombs on the board and you just start blowing things up. I, I mean, it's, it, is it going to be like burn? I don't know. It could be. It could be definitely like a slow burn. It really, really solid, just like control, like, you know, just it definitely feels like that vibe, just kind of like this early game just stop a lot of swarming stuff and the cool thing is like countdown typically happens at the beginning of your turn but if you get them to zero on your own turn by using something that advances a uh, uh landmark then they'll just blow up in the middle of your turn yeah. as well so you can have these crazy turns where you're advancing things and things are going off so countdown happens at round dart round right? start yeah so plunder is that's true yeah legit um that's so, very true. Yeah. yeah, so like something like uh, an opening Riptide Rex might bring him back in. Yeah. Um, That's a good way to level up Gangplank while you're at it too. Yeah. Like, yeah, goes into that plunder yeah, the, package. The time the time bombs and, uh, you know, having predict consistency definitely uh, seems like Bilgewater uh, could be a pretty strong pairing. That might be what I go for. I said uh, PZ, but I might have just changed my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's why I love talking about it out loud, because it's just like, oh, wait. But yeah, no, that's true. That's, uh, you know, just kind of like the Ignition Bot was, you know, we were talking about him a lot, where you can plug him with that just one damage ping. Time Bomb's pretty cool, because he just it does it instantaneously at the start, mm -hmm. round start. And then you can, you know, if you're really getting Time Bombs going off, two or three can really set you up for a really big turn. Yes, it can. A lot of plunder action going there and leveling up Gangplank quick. Yeah, he's he's really cool. Um, Level up animation was top freaking notch. It was incredible i was beyond yeah. hyped uh i can't wait to hear the voice lines between all the stuff and like just the the art so far with all this time warping like sand magicians it's like anytime something new comes out like in the mmo i'm gonna be one of uh zillions <laughs> one of his chronomancers because <laughs> yeah it was it was just absolutely crazy so uh big fan of his package his champion spell is pretty freaking toxic as yeah. well yeah um, it's at least it's like a high cost yes but it but it, it really, um, it's like, if you want to open Ruination, like, you can't do that anymore. Uh, if you want to, yeah. if you need to Vengeance something, it's like, oh, here's a Zillion's Chrono Shift. Um, yeah. So it's a seven cost burst. Give an allied champion the next time I die this round, fully heal me and grant me plus three, plus three instead. So seven cost, burst speed. You can't really just play this and then attack. Like, they're just going to eat the attack, most likely. You know, it's not something that... It's not like Unyielding Spirit where you could just play it at burst speed and then, now nah, deal with it. But it does function the same way as a response to the burst speed. You know, at burst speed, as a response to a kill, a threat, a vengeance, yeah. a ruination, a trade, a challenge, anything like that. Um, and, you know, it, it, Chrono Shift is just a regular card that can be slotted in your deck. It... To me, I mean, at least the champion has to die. So, like, if it's yeah. on Fiora or something, and Fiora did just get nerfed, but if it's on Fiora, she has to die, she'll reset her kill count, and then she'll come back with plus three, plus three. But, like, it is still, like, that card, Unyielding Spirit had that the same vibe. High cost, burst speed, ignore death trigger. But it's not in Demacia, and it, it you know, can't be played preemptively as much as Unyielding did. So, I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully, um, it's not as toxic. I don't think it's main deckable. It's, yeah. If it is, I feel like it might be a one of. Um, That's what I'm saying. Like, it could be main deckable in, like, the most toxic deck you can think of. But it's yeah, like, yeah. like, we'll swim think of something absolutely obnoxious <laughs> is, like, the question. But it's got yeah. that type of ceiling where, like, most likely you're right. It's really not main deckable. 
But there is this ceiling where it's like someone comes up with just this cancerous deck of just like, mm. nope, chrono shift. But how yeah, do you? Because I was trying. How do you feel about well, it as like a, uh, you know, as a, as his champion spell? If you just have two zillions. Oh, yeah, I was waiting to see where we would see the re- revive. So it definitely, um, yeah, you know, makes sense uh, to be his champion spell. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I think this is actually the worst part of his kit. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that I dislike it. I'm just saying in terms of, you know, viability, I think it is the worst part of his kit. But I, it, it goes perfectly with Zillion. It makes complete sense. If you ever played League, you know, um, you think that you're about to kill someone, Zillion, Ultim comes back to life. Yeah. And he's way stronger than you because you were just in a fight. Um, yeah. So it, it makes completely sense to at least his identity. So. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, it's... Um... Yeah, I think it would it would have been more beneficial if he had like a predict card there for what he's trying to do. Yeah. As his champion spell. But he does a lot already in the early game, so giving him like some late game champion spell is kind of interesting and it'll definitely, you know, catch people in a weird spot. The other thing that is uh kind of weird about it is, you know, that that will shift it away from the unyielding, you know, awfulness is that this says give an allied champion so you can't target a follower with this so i just yeah i just registered that that's that's even more like niche yeah it's super niche definitely not made deckable super niche like like, exactly it's it's not going to be as everywhere like you know even if you're running unyielding you don't see your fewer it's like all right cool i'll make my screeching dragon unyielding or my whatever and i'll still be annoying you know so this it, it can't do that and it can't buff those units so makes it a little bit better this next card, uh, Scrying Sands here, is pretty freaking bonkers, though. Yeah. This thing is a one-cost burst spell. Uh, predict and give an enemy minus two this round. So exhaust is definitely something that you know you just kind of naturally compare it to, because yeah. exhaust is a one-cost focus speed spell from Sharima that is minus two attack, and they get vulnerable, used for trading. But this is a super, I mean, this is burst, so you can play that right in the middle of combat, stop a trade from going off, all for one mana, and you get to predict, which is crazy yeah. strong. Yeah, it's, I like thinking uh, it's like a cheap variant of troll champ, honestly. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, influencing trades. At first when I saw, when I read predict, given any minus two, I just thought it was going to be focused. And I was like, well, that card's not like, but then you see burst, and it's like, wow, this could really influence uh early to mid game board presence yeah. um definitely a, a really solid card definitely can if you're running a rush deck i feel like this could really give you a one up so that they can't trade your board um and you know you could get that extra damage out that you need to win turn five turn six whatever you're trying to do and azir's right on it so you know you know it's made for azir and you know maybe you send your azir to attack and then you have all your soldiers being buffed, but they're like, okay, we'll trade the Azir. Um, you minus two, Azir still lives, and yeah. you still get all of your damage out. I could, like, I feel like it, it is very good. Um, it is a very solid combat trick. Yeah, really, really solid combat trick. I mean, there's a few decent ones. You know, Exhaust still sees play because the vulnerable yeah. aspect is really good. Uh, Quicksand has been pretty solid as well in there. So they definitely have some cool combat tricks, and this... This might take the icing on the cake here for the the best one, possibly. It, it's very very solid. Um, yeah. You know, it doesn't draw your card or whatever, like you know, Pale Cascade did. But it still it predicts is it predict is similar to card draw in a way because it, it's not giving you card advantage, but it's just making sure that next card is going to help. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, minimally. So it's it's definitely solid, um, and it, obviously great with Zillion just to keep him alive if he gets challenged or anything like that. And yeah, it, it is good. I'm I'm glad it's burst because yeah, at Gem speed, it would be pretty bad at uh, whatever yeah. it's called now. Focus okay. would be pretty uh, pretty mad, but burst makes it like extremely interesting. Um, and it's another cheap predict. I mean, these uh, zillion comes down on turn two. We have the, the chronomancer who's a two three two drop with predict. We have the clock thing that's a one drop landmark that has predict. We have this as a one. I mean, these zillion predicts himself. That's four cards I named that predict that are two cost or one cost, you know? Yeah, the it, consistency of your deck is. Definitely going to be no issue. Yeah. So whatever zillion, whatever you're trying to do with your deck, there's definitely options now that will allow you to make that happen. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this last card, I was pretty dang hyped on this morning. Um, I still think it's really good. I maybe came down from like, uh, what the hell were they thinking to like, wow, this thing's really good. But it's the uh, Soothsayer. 
uh, two drop, one four. When I'm summoned, grant ally champions and landmarks spell shield. Thoughts on that guy? Yeah. Um, one, giving any champion spell shield is pretty nuts. Yeah. Two, giving landmark spell shields. That's something that I imagined wasn't going to come out until they released Galio. Mm -hmm. But they already are introducing it, um, which yep. leads me to believe that they are going to go pretty heavy into spell shields. I mean, I'm sorry, into landmarks. Um, and that might even mean that they're going to go pretty heavy into landmark removal, which uh, would make sense with uh, a Malphite. You know, he's a rock. Yeah. What is so <laughs> landmark champion? Maybe who knows? Yo. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, the landmarks with spell shield seems super cool. Champions with spell shield are already bonkers. We already know that. Yeah. Landmarks with spell shield seems super interesting and seems like they're trying to get a design space for that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I you know my, my initial reaction was not realizing that it was also uh, champions. I thought it was just grant all allies. So I was like, uh, what the heck is this card doing here? Just everything gets uh, you know spell shield, which is crazy. Just champions is you know more fitting of the champion focus that Sharima has, which is yeah. cool. And yeah, like realistically, landmarks getting spell shield probably isn't a huge deal right now. And like everyone's kind of viewing this from the point where it's. Okay, they've printed so much landmark removal and, like, no one plays it. Like, realistically, like, w what gets played? Maybe the Noxus one every once in a while. Yeah. The Targon uh, six cost Meteor that from Invoke gets played on Starspring every once in a while. But, yeah, like, realistically, there's a lot of this landmark removal. That the Desert Naturalist didn't really see much play. And, and they were pushing landmarks a lot, and they have consistently... And really, there hasn't been, like, really any great landmark decks, right? Like, the Springs, yeah. it was huge because Star Springs, because it had its own win condition, and that's a good control deck. But there hasn't, we haven't really found, like, a consistent, like, I'm going to play landmarks and win the game that's not Springs, you know? That's not broken. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. We had a... We had Veiled, we had uh, yeah. uh, the Demacian one that I can't think of its name right now. Yeah, but, Grand um, Plaza. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and those... They were the, bonkers. Those were, like, over to, like, you know... Aphelios was overtuned with with Veiled, and it just made the whole thing ridiculous. And Grand Plaza with Haunted Relic, and blah blah. blah. So like, yeah, those, and it wasn't even like super landmark focused. It was just like really those. They just ran that, and they were enough to carry. So if if landmarks, if they push them more and more, gosh, if Malphite's a landmark champion, like yeah, absolutely, like this is going to become important. And on top of that, it's a freaking one four, which is so good. On to, I mean, just playing like Zoe right before this is great because instantly Zoe gets spell shield. Like, yeah. that's crazy on curve. Um, there's already a lot of like stuff that goes with Zoe in in Shurima as well. Yeah. Like, there, there's a lot of cool stuff like the, the Allegiance card in Shurima is really good as well for finding Zoe, give her plus two, plus two, and things. So it's just like, yeah, uh, spell shield on champions and a body that's a, even if this is just your two drop as a one four against aggro, if you're a control deck, that's great. You're set. You know, and if, yep. if it did its effect or not, and then late game, it has a lot of value of like, oh, I really need my champion to just freaking have spell shield right now, so sure. Yeah, I am really thankful Fiora got nerfed before this came out. Great I feel point. like there, there's already some mono Shurima nonsense. It was obviously just like a, a meme dream. Yeah. Uh, but there's more and more um, cards coming out that are supporting, you know, yeah. these champions that are your single win con and then fiora on turn three getting spell shield is pretty huge because that means you have to trade with her um yeah. and uh yeah i i'm happy that she at least has two health uh we'll see how what champions are paired with this i definitely think soothsayer is going to be somewhere definitely think it's going to be experiments it with and there's definitely going to be something that you know it, it promotes and allows uh so like it helps champions like tf Aphelios that like to sit in the back line or yeah. something that is something that is your win con so like Aphelios TF if you right want um so it definitely promotes them and I hope that we see it in as like or like you said Zoe and I hope I think that's the style of deck that she's going to be in I mean this just helps so much with the sun disc too like if mm -hmm. sun you know sun disc isn't really viable right now uh, it had a bug and that's the only thing that made it viable for like a day but <laughs> Realistically, this helps a lot with that because you're probably running multiple different champions. You need a zero to stay alive, and you need to, you know, max your sun disc out. So putting spell shield on both sun disc and a zero will probably help them stay alive. 
You know, and Azir is a backline champ, like you said. So it's just like, yeah, I don't know. This this card's really cool, really good. Um, And I like that they are adding these two drops that are like, they they can really do something late in the game that's effective, or they Mm -hmm. could just be played on turn two and still be a body. So like Black Rose Spy is a good example as like a three two. That's what I thought of right away. Yeah, it it can be Darius, like we've seen, (laughs) uh, or Battering Ram or something ridiculous. Oh, you know, or it could just be a three-two. This can be a one-four, or it can be a spell shield for one or more of your u- things. Not even units anymore. I was gonna say units, but mm, landmarks, baby. Yep, landmarks. Um, yeah, we'll move on. So that uh, the last thing is just Chrono Shift, which is already in there. So th- the cards we got before that were uh, pretty interesting as well. The, the first one's a Imagined Possibilities One Speed uh, Focus One Mana Focus Spell. Uh, create a random landmark with countdown in your hand or advance your landmarks by one round. A little more. It's interesting. Yeah, landmark support. Yeah, we haven't... The, the Talia card that creates a, a random landmark, we haven't seen any play for, of that. Stone weaving, so yeah. I can't, right. Yeah, I can't imagine it's ever used for that. Um, there are some, like, nut draws, I guess you can say, mm-hmm. uh, with the countdown, like Preservarium. Uh so then you draw a card, and then you draw a card like the turn after. I guess that could be pretty pretty crazy. Yeah, it doesn't win you the game, but it gives you a pretty crazy hand draw. But I can't imagine you ever playing Imagine Possibilities and using it for create a random landmark with cooldown with countdown. That seems like the yeah the second use. Like all right, if if your hand's kind of dead, you don't have landmarks. At least it can do that. <laughs> like yeah, can at least get you yeah, something. That seems. Yeah, or advance your landmarks one round. Yeah, yeah and it advances all your landmarks, so that. That part is like, yeah, if you have two or three landmarks out, you know, Preservarium, you have a Time Bomb, and you have something with a Rock Bear, yeah, that's pretty good for one mana. Yeah, you need all the... That's that's a pretty crazy setup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I took a pretty dramatic <laughs> example there, but, like, that's, you know, where they're going in the videos. They had Rock Bears going, so it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty decent. Yeah, I can't see... The, I see this one being more... You just not played. It's fair, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm definitely gonna play it in some like landmark stuff, and when all that fails, it's yeah. like, yeah, this card just is nothing after that. Uh, the next one's time in a bottle, uh, which is two cost, two, uh, yeah, two mana, focus speed, but it is predict and advance an allied landmark two rounds. So you predict, and then you advance just one of your landmarks by two rounds. Yeah. Uh, two mana. You know, the other one advances everything by one. This advances one thing by two, uh, but it does have the predict portion on it so this is kind of cool for some of those middle landmarks that are like you know like the one rock bear one that summons a rock bear and then gives you the plus two um plus two to your strongest like that's kind of interesting because you get to predict as well the reduce all by one is kind of interesting for like thralls i saw people kind of throwing that idea around and like all that's kind of cool um but yeah again this is again pretty niche it's pretty specific yeah time in a bottle i feel like it was made just to combo with preservarium on the same turn Oh, yeah. And so, like, turn three, Preservarium, time in a bottle. Geez, you, you predict first, and then you draw the cards, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's what I'm imagining, just for consistency's sake and card advantage. Um, yeah. Other than that, yeah, I can't see time in a bottle, like, being used either. I agree. Uh, real quick, I, did, I totally just forgot to say, but the, the suits there that we're talking about, as a funny thing, you're talking about working with Aphelios, it can get summoned with Cre- Crescendum. And then give Aphelios uh, Spell Shield because it's when summoned. I was thinking that earlier, yeah. and I forgot to say it when we were talking. Yeah, me too, exactly. I just had to go back to that because so, someone had, I saw that floating around in Discord at some point. Um, all right, next one. Uh, the Preservationist, which is like this freaking robot giraffe thing. I love it. It's a Reviving five. Reviving a tree. Yeah, <laughs> just giving life to a tree. It's in the art of the Preservarium in the back, uh, and it's like one of the Riot employees' like profile picture. That's why I recognize it. Like, someone really likes this giraffe. Five drop, four, four, uh, play, advance an allied landmark, three rounds. So it's some more advanced. I mean, right away, imagine possibilities advanced by one, time in a bottle advanced by two, preservationist advanced by three. They're clearly pushing the advanced Stop. here. Malphite, landmark with a count. Stop, counter. dude. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That's how he levels up. That's how he levels up. But maybe, maybe Malphite is a little rough, mm. and the countdown is him growing into Malphite. Stop, dude. Like, like the Malphite we know. That, that, dude. If, oh my gosh, I gotta put this episode out ASAP so we can be ahead of the curve for when this comes. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, again, like, 
The thralls are the only thing like with a big countdown like that, that advancing by three is great. Or if you just want to play buried sun disc and you just want to add all this up to get some advance, this thing's a four, four body. You know, we're thinking like, Oh, zillions coming with something crazy, but realistically only imagine possibilities really help zillion in the sense of uh, time bombs. You know, this card might help a zillion deck that has other landmarks, but the only one that works really well is Imagine possibilities, and even then, it's like the time bombs. All you have to do is advance one, and then the, they advance all the other ones. And there's really not going to be that many time bombs. So it's like, yeah. I don't know. The preservationist makes me think something else is coming still, because if yeah. not, I, it's not a ton. Yeah, I'd hope because that means like th- these cards were only made for sun disc support, and I'd right. be really sad if it was only sun disc support. Sun disc, like, and then like thralls, kind of, but yeah. like, yeah, is yeah. is that going to be better than? just using the Watcher combo anyway. Unless they nerf Watcher, the Thralls don't, haven't really mattered all that much. No. That was like the original take on the deck was like, oh, we'll have the Thrall win con, we'll have the Watcher win con. Yep. And then it was like, oh, the Watcher's strong enough, so yes. we can just cut out the Thralls completely. Exactly. And Shadow Arrows control is always going to be good, so we can just do that and then sit there. Yep. Yeah, and then furthering that, of you saying, like, is the only thing coming, the Buried Sun disc, is really this Clock Hand. So the Clock Hand's an 8-drop, Dope ass looking like clock thing. I love this thing. Um, four seven. When I'm summoned, you create two instant centuries in hand. No keywords. So eight drop four seven bad stats. Instant century is summon a random. Uh, it's zero cost focus speed. Uh, summon a random landmark with countdown, which is pretty nuts. You can just summon two random landmarks with countdown, or you can advance a landmark four rounds. Yeah. So this makes me. It's like either. Clear sun disc support, or something else is coming that has a big countdown. Um, I agree, or both, uh, which I'm hoping it's both. Right, but, yeah, it'll still work with sun disc even if something else comes. Yeah, yeah. Um, this card, the obviously instant sentry, is super cool. It is, but the clock hand kind of blows. Yes, um, I like. I really like that he just gets summoned and creates these two things, and then these two things are both free. At focus speed, I think that's really cool. Um, yeah. yeah, I just I, feel, I just think like the, the summon a random thing is okay, and then the advance a landmark four isn't. Yeah. There's nothing that warrants this just yet. Yeah, I feel like um, he's kind of like a hail mary. Like, oh, I'm losing the game, but I have this clock hand with two instant entries, and my sun disc can now open up. Let's or see what my landmarks are. Can be, yeah, can come alive. Right, exactly. Yeah, or just get random landmarks or something. It's like, and, and really, like, your Sun Dish, just based on, like, you should be able to level some champions in Shurima before this, most likely. Like, and to, to further that, you know, to further the countdown. And, and the card that counts down the Sun Disc already, that three drop, he already got buffed and stuff. So it's like, yeah, I don't, I just don't know if this is necessary. So yeah, maybe maybe that's coming. So that's what we're going to spend the, the remainder couple minutes here talking about is what's coming. So I guess we'll, we'll go real quick too. The, this thing's pretty freaking nuts. Let's talk about the clockwork. Yeah, we have three cards. Oh, yeah. So okay. we'll talk about the clockwork uh, curator and then we'll talk about what's coming um, gotcha. based on these two other cards. So the clockwork curator, I forgot he got put in there too. This thing's adorable. He's literally like a little hourglass. Uh, yep. Two drop, two, two, play, advance, and allied landmark two rounds. So there's another, I mean, that's what, f- now we have five advance cards just in the, the last two that we went through? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so much support. Um, there has to be something else coming. I can't imagine they made all these cards just for Sun Disc. Or, yeah, for all for Sun Disc or for Thralls or for, like, I'm honestly very intrigued with Rock Bears <laughs> with these cards. I kept thinking Rock Bear is just, they don't, they're, they're they're just rock bears. They're just five fours, right? <laughs> they don't have a way to win the game or anything like that. I just thought they were cool because it's like, all right, well, now I can actually play these things, get them out, and not really lose a whole lot of tempo, which is which is yeah. fun, which is cool. But, like, yeah, the, the more that you talk about it, the more I'm, I'm on your side of it's got to be something else coming. Yeah, I – like, why well, I, I understand releasing a Zier and the Sun Disc, but, yeah. like, there's, like, six cars now that are just, like, supporting, advancing – Landmark rounds. If it's all towards Sun Disc, I'm going to be pretty upset with the second release. So. <laughs> it's fair. I mean, like, you know, we did get one. The other countdown stuff isn't all that vast. You know, we have uh, the one that lets you get some treasures. We have the one that lets you get some invoke things, rock bears, and then Sun Disc, right? Yeah. And Zillion it really only came with time bombs, which don't need the advanced support that's here. No. That's the weird part yep. to me. 
Because it's like, here's a bunch of advanced support. And yeah, there's stuff it already works with. But the only thing that you're currently seeing right now is time bombs, which don't need any of this advanced support. Not at all. They're a countdown one. But the Clockwork Curator is freaking adorable. <laughs> it is. I really appreciate the artwork for the, the Clockwork so, uh, Curator. Next to the Clockwork Curator is Chip. He's a one-drop one little rock thing. He's a 1-1, one, one, and he took over the internet. He broke the internet. People freaked out. We were supposed to get our first champion yesterday. We got him today, and Runterra's site messed up. Their Twitter messed up. They're like, yeah, we thought it was going to be today. My bad. So then they're like, but we have a Chip Guardian coming. They like tried to buy us off with a Chip Guardian, and it worked because he's adorable. <laughs> So, so we'll be doing a giveaway for him for sure on Twitter like we always do for every Guardian. So if you don't follow us on Twitter, plug ourselves real quick. We do a giveaway. We normally give away two as long as the tweet hits 100 retweets, which we've been doing pretty consistently now. So yeah. if that happens, we'll give away two again. Uh, we just PayPal you guys five bucks. So uh, Chip is dope as hell. He's a one drop, one, one. Once you've summoned a landmark this game, grant me plus two, plus two. So realistically, he doesn't have to see that to, to happen, right? It's just once you've summoned no, yeah. a landmark. So he'll just yeah, be a 3-3 three, three if you have a landmark out. Yeah, so it could be like, oh, no, because you can't run Sun Disk with that. Uh, I was thinking, oh, Sun Disk turn one, chip turn two, and you have a 3-3. Three, three oh, yeah, right. No, that's, but he's Tarkon, so that doesn't work. Um, but, yeah, uh, he's pretty good. I mean, we've seen yeah. the one drops that become 3-3s, three, the, you know, the Butcher, um, that hold their – uh, value, you know, into mid to late game because they're three threes and can still do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're also pretty bonkers early game. Uh, I'm not saying Chip is as good as the Butcher because Butcher needs Plunder. This needs a landmark. We'll see if there's any really consistency with early landmarks for Chip to actually be out there. But if there is, he's definitely a very, very solid one drop. Yeah, he's he's a lot like Bark Beast too. Like Bark Beast has the. Uh, I was trying one. to think of the other one. And it yeah. Just my mind for some reason. Yeah, the one one, and then the you know if something dies, he, he's pretty cool with the um, the guy who summon the three one who summons a roiling sands. Uh, oh yes, that's that really cool. Because yeah, a rock hopper, right? So he'll be a it, it, that into curve with that is really fun because you have a three three and a three one on turn two, and you'll have giving them vulnerable with something. So then Chip can like trade really well into their two drop because he's got three health. So like yeah, that, that's sure. pretty crazy. Um. Yeah, I definitely like that curve, and it definitely, you know, Josh, that's a that's a card in Targon that says when you've summoned a landmark. That's landmark support in Targon in the region that Malphite's coming. Malphite is a mountain. Will yes. I want? What is your is over or under fifty percent that Malphite is a landmark? The more that we talk about this, and the longer this cast goes, the farther over fifty percent I get. He's a landmark. <laughs> He really might be a landmark. I, I, after seeing these cards, I and like talking them through, I honestly have no doubt in my mind that he's a, he's a landmark. <laughs> okay, that went from over fifty percent to no doubt. We talked about this before that Galio was going to be the landmark champion because he's a freaking statue. But this man's a mountain. Yes, this man is a mountain, and. He wasn't. He was dormant until his little rock shard grew into the like until he was strong enough to walk. That's what Chip we're saying. honestly might be Malphite when he's younger. No, that's, that's not true. Don't, See, don't I, that. but, I <laughs> said Chip was a Krug from League because he looks like a little Krug that you kill, yeah. not the big one. Like it, after you kill, and he splits into the little ones. Maybe he's just a good Krug. Mm. You know, those Krugs are. You know, we're going to, to hunt them down. They have the pinchers, and they're all gross. Maybe he's just like I. I choose to be peaceful. He's there is zero doubt in my mind that this is the nicest Krug if he is a Krug. I mean, he is absolutely so nice. I mean, we'll see when he turns three, th uh, like into a three three. Maybe he yeah. becomes angry Krug. Who knows? Oh, if it's like the lonely poor animation where he flips, <laughs> that'd be sick. Um, yeah, that'd be hysterical. So there's a lot more to talk about there in Targon. Uh, for I Ionia or Irelian, <laughs> that's what I said. Um, a little bit less, we got uh, the Blade. It's a one drop, one one. Obliterate me when I leave combat. So, uh, I guess it is after it, is it strikes it or dies or whatever. It's a blade. It, it's it's not main deckable. It's a token. There's no rarity on this. So it you know it doesn't go in your deck. It's clearly going to go with Irelia. And I I don't know what does this give you any inclination of what Irelia? I I ban Irelia in League like half the time. I hate her. So what is she going to do in in here? I. It's so weird because Aureli is one of those champs that, you know, they can never, in League, they can never 
you know, make her not broken or not hmm. just terrible. Um, so she's been changed multiple times and nerfed and buffed multiple times. Okay. So it's like really hard to pin down exactly what she does or what they are going to have her do besides blades or like in league she like jumps to a lot of things um like she's good yeah. at executing things um and then she has her blade ult that she does i don't know if they're going to try and translate that at all i'm not really sure um hmm. but yeah the only thing that like a blade obliterate me when i leave combat is really odd because why would you ever recall the blade? Does she have some type of recall mechanism? Um, That's then, true. Yeah. Then deal damage to everything that was obliterated. This is know? the first time we've seen these words, like leaving combat as a source of a trigger for something. Because yeah. it, it could just have like strike obliterate me when I leave, you know, or just strike obliterate me. It would be, you know, after yeah. an attack. I mean, it's the same thing. So if this thing strikes and then it leaves combat after, it still gets obliterated. So it's, it's just very yeah. differently... It make, yeah, worded. it makes me believe that Aurelia is going to have some way to control these blades. To put them back um, to your hand, you can keep playing them or something? Something along those lines, or, you know, they're a token, so, you know, she puts them on the board, has a chance to take them off for some type hmm. of positive gain. Um, I, I feel like it might be that. Uh, maybe there's something that stacks with the amount of obliterated cards, because it is a one-drop, yeah. one-one. Um yeah, I this doesn't really tell you much, but I've never we haven't seen this text, so I assume yeah there's going to be some way to interact with these blades to get them off the board. For me, like what I think about first is two things. Like one, selfishly, I I've always liked the swarmy Ionia lists. Um, I've really liked field musicians now, uh, and this has some good synergy with that. Possibly depending on how they come out, but just a unit coming onto the board can start proccing field musicians better. But I really like that, like, ah, I'm just playing a ton of different units. I'm just swarming in and out of combat. I have five units, so when I play, um, you know, the uh, Overwhelm guy from uh, Noxus, the uh, crowd favorite, he gets bigger. Yeah. When I play, uh, when I have Sparring Student out and I get more Blades coming out, she gets bigger. I like that style of in and out combat. It's always yeah. been there. It's kind of like the Zed style, but it's never been super consistent. But I go back to it constantly. It's one of my favorite archetypes. So that could be something that they're leaning into because Ionia doesn't really have a great identity right now. No, not at all. And I like that. They have a lot of support cards that people forget about. Like the uh, Naivori Highwaymen are in there. You know, there's a lot of those cards got buffed and messed around. Inspiring Mentors now like decent again. So a lot of those kind of got mixed up and, and touched. So it's kind of like it could go into that. The other just funny off the top thing I want to say is that Von Yip in Blades will be meta. <laughs> that would be incredible. I would love to love to see it. You heard um, it here. <laughs> thinking about it now, I'm I'm hoping that they didn't just throw obliterate in there. So like, say Aurelia has like a very abundant way of creating these blades. Right. If they had to use obliterate because of things like they who endure or um, that's true things that's things that scale off of things dying. Um, I wonder if they had to you know take the blades out of that that area just because it would get too too insane. That's a really good point. Yeah, it could be that. It definitely could be that. You know, it could still be strike and obliterate me or whatever. But you know, that's just still an interesting. That could be the reason why obliterates on the text, just so it's not buffing they who endure or like anything else that can buff from that. Yeah, or anything. Or like even a, a bark like a prankster or you know prankster. Yes, that's yeah. the prankster and the um, yeah, and the other guy. Why I can't think of any card names right now. Hey, it's, it's hard, really dude. Bad. Yeah, the Neverglade Collector. Yeah. Yes. Both those are, uh, yeah, that's actually like anti-synergy that I didn't think about. So that's a really good point. That actually might, you know, lead us to, okay, she's going to play a lot of freaking blades. I mean, when she ults in League, it's like a thousand blades around you. So. Yeah, she makes that triangle around you. Yeah, whatever shape it is, like an arrowhead, like triangle. Yeah. It comes out. yeah, it's obnoxious. I hate her. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like... Maybe she will just have like a bajillion blades and that'll be the thing. I mean, every time you see her, they're always like floating above her head and stuff yeah. like that. So she definitely has to be able to control them, whether it's recalling them, yeah. whether this is an anti-synergy thing or she's just doing crazy. There is a, um, a perk in League called Hail of Blades. Maybe that'll be an ability. Who knows? There you go. Um, 
Yeah, maybe, maybe that's where they're going. So the last thing on this site is you can see full arts on here as well. Just another shout out to your entire CCG. It's really sweet. So you can just grab these uh, full arts right away if you want to, uh, you know, use them for a thumbnail or anything like that or for whatever, if you're a content creator, uh, really good site to use for that as well. And you can see the, the, the blade icon, like Josh was saying, they are just floating all around her at all times. So our two predictions are Irelia is going to amass blades. To an extent that we've never seen. Just so many freaking blades. And uh, our boy Malphite's going to be a freaking landmark, dude. It's happening. He's got to be a landmark. He's got to be. Uh, to close out, we got a huge shout out to our, our mod, actually, uh, Infamous in the Discord. He, he supported us on Patreon. Uh, so really, really appreciate you. Uh, he supported us on the sticker tier at $5. And uh, I'll shout that out real quick. We have, we have these sweet stickers here that are, uh, you know... Five dollars on Patreon. It'll be May's reward, and uh, any any month after that. So if you're looking to grab a sticker anywhere in the continental U.S., I'll ship it out to you. Uh, outside of that, it's obnoxiously expensive, so I apologize. But he's uh, yeah, he's he's getting. He already has one of those because I gave him one for sponsoring the tournament. Then he has. Uh, a sticker he bought from our Teespring. So if you're looking to get some swag for our logo on Teespring, I got I got the bottle. It's really sweet. But if you're looking to grab that. He has, already has that on Teespring. So we have to send him our old stickers because he's, he's going to have like seven different Twin Sun stickers. So I appreci appreciate you, Infamous, uh, and letting us plug our Patreon there as well. There's a couple different tiers. We've cleaned it up a little bit over time. We used to offer like a lot of different things, but we got a lot busier. So we kind of cleaned it up more as just like a support and we give you, uh, you know, different. You can mess with the segments of our show. You can submit stuff to, for us to talk about. And also we can uh, ship out some cool stickers. So. If you're interested in checking that out, that's just uh, Patreon, the Twin Sons podcast. Uh, you know, follow us on Twitter. We will definitely be doing an episode next week with uh, probably a Riot employee, maybe. I don't know if you feel like doing that, Josh. <laughs> Sounds pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe we'll figure that out. Um, so, yeah, maybe next week we'll have, we'll have somebody on. That'll be fun to talk about. And, uh, yeah, we'll have um, a giveaway for Chip as soon as that drops. So get ready. Get ready for those retweets, dude. I My mean, <laughs> retweets. <laughs> you got to retweet for for. I'm done. End the show. End the show. It's done. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>